Remember, if you want to be forgiven by Allah, there is a greater likelihood that you will be forgiven if you can find it within yourself to forgive those who have wronged you. As much as it is very difficult, try to release, try to let go. You may not want to associate with people after you've forgiven them because if they are toxic, then it might affect you negatively again. Also, a believer is not bitten from the same source twice. So you forgive, but you may not want to associate with them. At times, you can forgive and embrace, which is better. وَلْيَعْفُوا وَلْيَصْفَحُوا أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ Forgive and embrace. Would you not like Allah to forgive you? Indeed, Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. So my brothers, my sisters, the main aim of this entire month of Ramadan is to seek the forgiveness and to achieve it after all, which will then bring about closeness to the Almighty. Aisha, may peace be upon her, the mother of the believers, May Allah be pleased with her. She says that I asked the messenger, if I were to witness the night of decree or the night of power, Laylatul Qadr, what should I say? He says, say, Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anni. Oh Allah, you are most forgiving. You love to forgive, so forgive me. That hadith, that narration and that supplication show that what we're supposed to be achieving is the forgiveness of Allah Almighty. And like I said, learn to forgive others. Try, look, search within yourself. You know what? When you let go, not only will you be doing yourself a favor, but you will actually be earning the pleasure of Allah Almighty. Why should Allah forgive you and I? Allah doesn't need us. But when you show that you also have a quality of mercy, Allah has mercy on you. Irhamu man fil ardi, yarhamkum man fil sama. Have mercy upon those on earth, and Allah will have mercy upon you. The one in the skies will have mercy upon you. My brothers, my sisters, these are the most powerful nights of this beautiful month of Ramadan. Don't waste them. They will not come back. Once they're gone, they're gone. Try to say the dua and the supplication throughout the night or at least some portion of the night or at least while you're doing your suhoor. Because when you're doing your suhoor, we have many factors that we need to look at. One is, it's the last third of the night which itself is already auspicious. It's the time of tahajjud. It's the time when Allah Almighty is calling. Is there anyone who's asking so that I can give? And this happens every single day. If it is in Ramadan and it's in the last 10 nights of Ramadan and it is one of the odd nights, chances are very, very high that Allah will forgive you. Once Allah forgives you, all the other supplications would come in. They are secondary. The, the primary supplication is, Oh Allah, forgive my shortcomings. Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, guide me. Oh Allah, help me. The rest of it is going to come. If we were to ask Allah for worldly items, before we seek forgiveness, how would we be in terms of our supplication to Allah? We would actually be very miserly. We want what we want, but we don't want to please Allah. So the first thing you ask Allah, Oh Allah, be pleased with me, forgive me, forgive my shortcomings. I'm a human being, I make mistakes, I have made mistakes. I sin and I have sinned, but I will not do it again. And I'm going to try my best to be the best possible person that I can. I will fulfill my instructions or the instructions you've placed on my shoulders. I'm going to do my best. I'm going to change my life. I'm going to strengthen me and so on. You ask Allah, Oh Allah, strengthen me. So when all this happens, you would achieve the pleasure of Allah Almighty. But if you are not going to feel the importance of these nights, and if the issue or the matter of Laylatul Qadr does not interest you, then you have a lot to work on. <laughs>